everyone. Welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and today we're going to be doing another indie horror author spotlight. Today I have with us author George Adamchek, and he has an amazing book out right now. It's a collection of short stories, and it's called Lost Minds, Wandering Souls, Part 7. I, I've, I'm i almost through it, and it's an amazing read. George, welcome to the Horror Room. Hey, nice to be here. Nice to meet you, sir. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, man. So tell us a little bit about Lost Minds, Wandering Souls 7. Well, I just, uh, I started in 2019, and I just figured it'd be a one and done. I'll never read it, except for like my close friends and relatives, and uh, it would just uh, go by the wayside. I always wanted to do a book, but then mm -hmm. uh, everyone started saying, well, uh, what? When's number two coming out? When's number three coming out? Everyone's enjoying them. So it turned into a big series. I'm already working on number eight. Nice, nice. Yeah, and and um, you, thank you for sending me part six and part seven. I'm, I'm enjoying reading them. Um, now, now part seven, there's a story that I I absolutely enjoyed. It was called Elliptical, like the, mach the exercise machine journey. That was a yes. fun story. Now, what gave you yes, inspiration to, to come up with, with that story? <laughs> Pretty funny because actually I was at the gym. I like going to, oh. when it's not crowded, I was uh, a 24 hour gym. I went in the middle of the night, like two in the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, and um, no one was in there. And I'm just thinking about stuff. And I saw like a reflection. And I'm like, wow, wouldn't it be so cool? And it, uh, I don't want to give too much about the story, but yeah, like uh, a ghost happened. Uh, it, like it looked like yeah. a ghost, you know, the reflection. So that's how it got me started. And uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's like uh, one of my favorites too. Yeah, because I, I mean, as a guy, right? Um, it, there, there was a time, like every guy, there, there's always been that girl that you were madly in love with. And for whatever reason, yeah. she wouldn't give you any time of right. day. And to to her you were almost invisible and like so it definitely that story resonated to me i was like because everybody every guy unless she was one of those super good looking popular guys that got every girl but every <laughs> yeah. but but every average normal guy has had a kaylee in their life exactly exactly and it's like uh sometimes you ever wonder, like, you always wonder, like, maybe if I would have said something or done something at that time, maybe something would have happened. And that's what that story is kind of about, too. And I hate those guys that came out <laughs> about that seems to get everyone. But, yes. uh, yeah, that's what it was about. And yeah, then, like, uh, it was it was fun to write, too, because it just flowed. And especially uh, the climax scene um, out at that cottage in the middle of nowhere. It just, I was just typing away like crazy. It really, it really came out like uh, really well for me. Yeah, because because I didn't know where that story was going. I mean, it, it definitely towards the end it like picks up real quick and and has you thinking, okay, this is going one way, and then like it goes in a completely different <laughs> direction. I tried to. Oh, that's one of my favorite, favorite things that people have been telling me. The readers that uh, have been telling me that each of my stories seems like a different story. It's like someone else is writing it. And that's really, really cool. I yeah. think that's what I'm, I'm really proud of that. Um, yeah, uh, Elliptical Journey. That There was actually another one that I wrote. There's something about going overnight in the middle of the night to a gym. I actually wrote another one, a story like that, too, on the way there. So, um, Really? Yeah, I, it seems that I, I, I like I, I, I had a job where I was working um, different hours. Sometimes I'd start at eight in the morning. Sometimes I'd start at two in the morning. Sometimes I'd start at midnight. You know, it was, I was had weird hours. So sometimes I, I do it, uh, end up like in the middle of the night, sometimes going for a walk. And that'll give me an idea. I'll just see a shadow and boom, that'll be an idea for a yeah. new story. <laughs> because it, it resonated to me also too, not only because that, that Kaylee girl, but it was also because Back when I was going to the gym, by the way, I need to get back into the gym. While I was going to the gym, I was <laughs> always a overnight gym person because a lot of people, you know, they were like, oh, I like going to the gym because I like socializing with people. No, no, no. No. I mean, when no. I go into the gym, I like to work out. I don't find going to the gym fun. I go in, boom, 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 get the fuck out. And, like, yeah. the best yeah. time to do it is in the middle of the night. 
You too. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. We're like this. Yeah. I uh, what, I just hit every machine, boom, 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 like two or three times and get out of there. I like to yeah. do that circuit training or whatever it's called. <laughs> and uh, I mean, if you run into somebody and like, uh, some, uh, you know, have to strike up some sort of conversation, that's one thing. But trying and actually, it's actually better because you're actually, um, you're actually doing the cardio too at the same time, kind of, because you're doing from machine, machine, machine. So. Exactly. And plus, I don't want yeah. to go to, uh, go to the gym during the day was packed too, because like there's a bunch of women walking around with tight leotards. And stuff. I like to be focused on my workout, not ass. You right. know, like I want to be right, focused right, on my right. workout, and that's it. Yes, and that's yeah. what that story was about. Because yeah. I, I, I was imagining what would it be like if, like, two in the morning, all of a sudden, your dream girl walked in. I know, <laughs> and you had the chance, you know, to uh, do what you always wanted to say, what you always wanted to say, do what you always wanted to do, and that's how it worked out. It really did. It really was and, a cool idea, I thought. And to and to be honest, I would probably did the same thing he did, which was absolutely nothing <laughs> <laughs> at his age. Man, I mean, I, exactly, I, exactly. I was so bad. Listen, I was so bad with women in my in my teenage and my early twenties. So bad. I, I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. I re- really didn't. I, I didn't yeah, you know, yeah. like. I, I related to this guy because because <laughs> it, because when it comes, this is something I learned. By the way, any young guys out there or whoever's troubling, it's all about confidence. It's all about yeah, confidence. Yeah. It could be fake confidence. It could be absolute bullshit fake confidence. That is what women like. Ninety nine point nine percent. It's all about confidence. Right. Yeah, you know what? I was terrible. I'm like my buddies. I had a friend who was sort of like what you were uh, the type that you were talking about earlier. And he's like, I'd be walking down the street, like some girl was like, she's in love with you. And he, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> I never had. And that. He knew. I couldn't tell. I, like this girl that we were talking to that we knew from the neighborhood. Yeah. And he's like, she loves you. And like, what? and ended up we started dating after that. I didn't know. I had no clue. No clue. I'm, I was the same way. I had no clue. Because, I mean, it wasn't until, like, years later, like, like girls right. were like, oh, my God, I had the biggest crush on you. And I'm like, what? I had no idea. I would totally jump on that if you had told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes a while for us to read. I guess yeah. we, we have guys who are mature or later than the women do. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's, uh, I'm glad you love the story. Yeah. It was it was a good story. I mean, it was a good book in, in general. Now, all right, so I have a question. So when it comes to writing short stories, do you already have a ending in mind that you're working towards, or is it something that you you start writing and then you kind of find your ending midway in, 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 into writing? Now, if I was if I was writing novels, I think I would be able to maybe, but like uh, no, which my short stories, I like to get have an outline written out, a one page outline usually does it. With the ending. Now, sometimes it does go astray, and I do end up a little bit off track. But most of the time, because I tried a couple of times where I just tried to wing it, and uh, didn't work out. It, it really, it's much. It, I had finished the stories, but it took a lot longer. If I have a one-page outline where it tells you tells me where I'm going, then uh, it's a, it works out a lot better for me. Uh, you can work towards something that you know. You know, like you have a goal in mind instead of just like, well, maybe what did this happen? And you're sitting back in your chair. Oh, what if this happened? No, write it down first. And it works out for me anyways. It works out a lot better. Now, do you have like any writing rituals? Like when you have, you said that right. Do you, like, do you have to put some kind of music on? Do you got to pour yourself a certain kind of drink? Is there a room that you go to? Uh, well, I like, um, uh, I like, uh, I never really drank coffee that much. I used to when I was a kid, and then I couldn't drink it. Now I have to have a cup of coffee before I start writing. And I got my um, recliner chair in front of my desk instead of <laughs> like a regular desk chair. I got a, I got a lazy boy. Nice. And I, uh, yeah, and I, uh, what you call it? Uh, and usually I try to do it after, um, you know, we're watching TV together and she falls asleep. Then I, um, then I start writing. That's my my ritual. A cup of coffee, r- lazy boy, and then I start going. And then I look at the outline, and boom, there you go. Get started. And uh, it usually works out. So what got you into writing? I always liked writing when I was a kid. I always wanted to write. I mean, I remember my mom had an old plastic Smith Corona, blue plastic, 
and I would type on it. My mom would get mad at me because like I was using all of the good typing paper. She had my dad bring some from work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, which I remember writing a werewolf story when I was eight years or nine years old. And then uh, what ended up happening was I found a big, uh, an old box and it had one of my old stories from when I was 15 years old. Back then I would like to write um, Conan the Barbarian type story. That was oh, what nice. I was into back then. <laughs> and I read it and I'm like, wow, this ain't too bad. So uh, what's it called? that got me thinking. And then a friend of mine, a real good friend of mine, Daryl, he, um, told me all about self-publishing, which I had no idea. He told me everything about how to do it. So I gathered some old stories, other stories, and made up some my other, um, tried to come up with some other ideas. And boom, there came, it was the first book. And um, the first one um, uh, is pretty cool too, because a publisher found it and I didn't know them. And they liked the second story so much, they turned it into a comic strip. Now I'm a nice. comic strip writer. Yeah, um, it's in a newspaper. It's in a um, it's uh worldwide, but uh, yeah, it's most based in this country. A kid in a comic. Hold on one second. A kid in a comic. Let's do this. I hope so. And I'm in there, um, with the Halloween closet, and it's being drawn. Pull it back soon. Oh, hold on a second, sir. Mm -hmm. Pull it back. Go. Oh, sweet. That's cool. Uh, yeah. And um, I'm in there. Uh, I, I, I write the, uh, um, the story that I had in my book one is now serialized with a comic strip in each issue. It's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of that, too. Oh, that's fucking awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, okay, so, um, so you're a self-publisher. So. Oh, yes, yes. How do you get your work out there? So I, I I interview and I'm friends with a lot of indie authors that are self-publishing. What I which is, which is tough. It's a tough thing to do, and I mean, the toughest thing about it is getting your work out there. So what do you? What are some strategies and some techniques that you do to, to get your work out there? Well, first of all, I was lucky. Um, I love Facebook. I love posting memes. So I had my own pages. That I have um, on Facebook, where I've been working on for 10 years. And so when I posted I'm writing books, some of the people from those humor pages got behind me and helped me out. And then also I go to as many uh, conventions as I possibly can. Um, I go to even like small events. I'll go to a flea market or um, uh, one of my best shows was a Christmas show. Everybody was selling like a uh, cute little uh, elf ornaments and Santa Claus mm -hmm. things and the garden, no the gnomes and stuff. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And then I see these uh, little old ladies turn the corner. Because like, ah! you're seeing my, uh, the covers of my books in the background on my backdrop. And a lot of them got scared. <laughs> but I did so good at that show because I guess it was a change of pace. And like it was right before Christmas. So people are thinking, well, you know what? My nephew would love this. And it's signed by the author. So I try to go into as many of those shows as I possibly can. And it's kind of fun because then uh, you do it the next year and the year after that, and you start building up a fan base. Yeah. Yeah. And because and, I go to a lot of horror conventions and I probably go yeah. to about 10 a year. And wow. one of, and, yeah. And like, so I've only had his YouTube channel for less than a year now. But I, it, but what I do now when I go to the horror conventions, I bring my GoPro camera and I do a walkthrough. And show everybody what that convention looks like. And um, but one of the things I do is I stop by the vendors. Majority of the time it's the horror authors, and you know I just have a quick chat with them about what their book is and blah blah blah. And I'm telling you, I bought so many books <laughs> from horror conventions <laughs> even before I, I had my YouTube channel. Before, even before I had my YouTube channel, I bought so many books from indie horror um, authors at conventions because. They talked to me. I was like, oh, I got to know who they were as a person right. for for right. a couple minutes. And like that's so important. So that's why like, like with my channel, like when I go to these horror conventions, I try to stop at every single author and have them oh, give a quick cool. plug. That's very nice. About to too. Book. Yeah, because um because like if people don't know, it's like people don't know. But that's why I got this channel too, because I like to shine the spotlight. Oh, that is very cool of you. Because, yes, every little bit of um, 
uh, um, publicity, but I'm sure, and I'm sure they everyone appreciates that from you. Um, mm-hmm. and, and plus, you seem, you seem like a real uh, cool guy uh, to meet at a show, anyways. Yeah, I, yes. yeah do you, which shows do you which shows do you go to? So I've been to majority of the ones on the East Coast. So I'm in Maryland. Okay. Um, yeah. But this year, I'm going to be in the Midwest quite a bit, and I'm also be in the West Coast. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm going to be at um, Days of the Dead in Chicago. Oh, uh, in November? Uh, there's one in March also. There's two this year. I know. It's crazy. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay. Because I'm, I'm going to be at a one in November. Oh, great, great. I'll be there. I'll be there, too. It had to be cool. I'll, I'll be able to shake your hand and thank you in person. Yes, yes, yes. It's going to be cold as shit, in, I bet you, in Chicago in November. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah, you know what? It's cold right now, but it's been good lately. The last few years, Chicago's been a lot warmer. I remember going from um, Chicago to Atlanta, and it was freezing cold and snowing in Atlanta, and I left in Chicago back there. It was nice. So, But, uh, yeah, yeah, um, the weather's changing, as you can tell. Everyone knows in the country right now. Right? I'm in Chicago quite a few times i'm a huge sports fan also i'm uh and so i try to go to see every single sports team so i've been to a nice, bulls game nice. and i've oh, been to wow. um uh, uh, i've been to wrigley i also been to the white Sox stadium oh, so, cool. yeah but yeah, when, we, when, when i went for the bulls game it was i drove from maryland to chicago which was oh wow don't ever do that drive but it was <laughs> and it was i want to say it was December or January, and I remember whatever bridge that, that brings you into downtown Chicago, I remember my car was swerving to the yeah. wind was so hard. I was like, whoa, I see why they call it the Windy City. <laughs> yeah, it's vicious sometimes. It can be brutal. I've seen yeah. people like just flying down the street and like blown down. It's like a three, uh, like Charlie Chaplin or something. Yeah. No. By the way, anybody who's never been to sh- Chicago, I'm going to explain sh- sh- Chicago. It is like New York and Baltimore having a baby. That's Chicago. Oh, that's cool. Like, that's a cool way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. I yep. think so. Yep. Yeah. I grew up on the south side, uh, close enough to Sox Park, so that um, a couple of times when we spent all, blew all our money on beer, <laughs> we actually walked home. <laughs> that's how close we left. <laughs> Live there, uh, to the Sox Park. So we were always Sox fans. But I've been to Cubs games and uh, the Bulls game. Uh, I was at one. I was lucky enough to see Michael Jordan play. Oh, and, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. And um, a lot of Blackhawks games, one or two Bears games. But yeah, a lot of fun. We have some good sports history here. Mm-hmm. Tons. Tons. Yeah, yeah. All right. So part seven, I mean, volume seven of. Now you yeah. say you're already on volume eight. Now, do, do, do we have yes. a potential re- release date for that? For a release? I'm gonna try mm-hmm. and get. It, I'm trying to get it out by um, April Fool's Day. That'd be perfect, right? Oh shit! <laughs> shit! Nice. Yeah, I'm trying to do a couple of years. Two or three. I think I actually got three in one year one time. Really? But, uh, yeah, I'm trying to do two or three a year. Yeah, I mean, okay. I I got started late. So I'm trying to uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get mm-hmm. out as much as possible, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to get that. And um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's mostly written already. I just have to have it edited and formatted. But I'm gonna wait a few months because I just latest one just came out November 30th. I had my um, um, yeah. So I'm gonna wait a few months for the next one. But everyone seems to just love them. I'm getting all kinds of great reviews on Amazon and Goodreads all the time. It's, I'm, I'm shocked, stunned, and amazed that I got. Uh, <laughs> I, I wish I would have started earlier, but yeah, you never know yeah. what happens. You know, you like uh, you're busy with life. You get busy with life, and you don't think about things. And, so, I, it worked out pretty fast. Yeah, but I mean, so, uh, I mean, I mean you, it, it, they're they're, they're yeah. fun, short stories that you you know, and and they're relatable stories too, which is fun. I try to. I try to make yeah. them like that. Yeah, I, you know what? Um, people, a lot of people used to love. You know, everyone used to love uh, reading novels and like Lord of the Rings and War. Uh, like Stand are so big and like you know, a lot of people don't have the time for that anymore. I met a lot, mm-hmm. lot of people, especially single moms. Single moms just like yeah. thank me like, <laughs> and I could read a short. I could 
get my kids settled, and I then uh, I can read one of your stories and then go run and check on them again. And it's like you know, I can fucking sit down. I don't have to, uh, you know, I, it, like it does. You, if you don't have time for a week, you don't have to worry about it because you don't have to remember all the characters and what was going on. You don't have to reread the last two chapters. So it, you know, it's just short. It, it, you know, yeah, yeah, hit and run stories. Yeah, I'd like to say hit and run. Yeah. So speaking of the hit and run, there's a hit and run story in there, and it's story. about an architect. Um, and an um, architect, a archaeologist. An archaeologist. Yeah. There go. Okay. An archaeologist, and um, he comes home, and um, boy, um, uh, he's really into his wife. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's uh, what's it called. I like that idea because um, <laughs> I think. I had a cousin who actually became a civil engineer and went all over the world. And um, I just thought, what man, what could I think? And the idea for the story came from him and his uh, family and stuff. And, uh, he lived all over Philippines and Thailand and Vietnam and Turkey and Dubai. So I'm like, and then uh, at that point, I was sort of getting into like, maybe I can do some like HP Lovecraft, like cosmic horror type uh, evil, you know? Mm-hmm. And it uh, just, I uh, just got um, just meshed together, and uh, a lot of people like that story too. It's a great story. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a great story. It's a great story. It's cool. listen. I'm gonna tell you about it right now. Listen, I don't say I don't say it a lot on my channel. Definitely grab uh, this book. It, it is so much fun. If you like oh, man, short and hard stories, it is so much fun. I've been. I mean. I, I ran through yeah, part ran six. Through you, part you sent me part six, and I ran through it pretty quick. And I'm like 75% through part seven, and it's so fun. Like these stories, grasp you. That's cool. I'm so happy, man. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, no problem. Yeah, I, and you know what's wild? I can't. Um, I can't stop the brain from shooting out more ideas. I have like 40 more of them already ready to go. Like. Uh, half written or partially written or like at least outlined. I got, I, I'm just, <laughs> just firing them <laughs> out as fast as I can. I was like, not quite as, uh, not quite like Stephen King could, but I mean, he's in a league by himself. I don't know yeah. how he does. Even the Game of Thrones guy was like, holy cow, uh, how do you do that? <laughs> he just knocks them out. Yeah, yeah. So George, where can everyone find you, my friend? I'm on Amazon all the time, Lost Minds, Wandering Souls. Um, which one? Yeah, you like six? That's cool. Uh, that's my favorite, yeah. I think, so far. Six is my favorite. Six is Five fun. is different because five is, um, I tried to do a one whole book with the same character in all the stories. And she's sort of like a mixture of like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Harley Quinn, and Quantum Leap, where she jumps from body to body and uh, fights evil in different, uh, different women. So that's kind of cool too. So um, that's fun. But yeah, I'm gonna keep shooting, uh, keep uh, writing, and keep uh, keep on going as far as I can. Awesome, awesome. And you see, now you got me researching a day to day in Chicago that's having a march because I I wanted to get that over. I wanted to get shut. I didn't want to go into Chicago in the winter, to be honest. <laughs> so right, I'm like, exactly. Uh, so I'm a, I'm gonna look to see if that's in March because I I might be changing my my. my Travel plans. Absolutely. But, yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm going to have a table at the next one. I think it's in March. You'll have to look okay. at it too. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Be because yeah, cause I, I know for a fact there's one in November and I, I put right, that on my right. calendar. But if there's one in March, that's amazing. All right. Yeah. Because it's warmer. Yes. Okay. 100%. I do not want to deal with Chicago in the cold again. Right. 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 All right. Well, George, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, man. Listen, you're more than welcome to come on. When part eight comes in, when, when part eight comes on, I'll have you come back on in, and we can talk about that one as well. That would be so cool. So nice to meet you, sir. You too, my friend. I'll, I'll, listen, I'll be seeing you in a couple months. Anyway, so thank you. Yeah, thank meet you. in person, man. I, I can't wait. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.